Today I'm going to show you guys how I painted this kingfisher bird using just warm primary colors. Now if you haven't had a chance to try a painting project using just the three primaries, you're going to be amazed at the variety of colors you can achieve. I've got my Fabriano Artistico 140 pound cold press paper taped down. The colors I'm using are Holbein Scarlet Lake, Daniel Smith Ultramarine Blue, and Holbein Permanent Yellow Light. These are my three warm primary colors. They're a little bit spread out on the palette, but here's the blue, the red, and the yellow. So you'll be amazed at these three colors. We can produce so many mixes, but of course to start out, we have to get a good sketch. So the best way to get a good sketch is to either do a tracing if you're not comfortable with freehand sketching or to freehand sketch lightly. Make sure that your marks are light enough so that you can erase them and you can tighten it up if you make any mistakes. It's pretty rare to do a perfect sketch on the first pass. So just do your best and get down the most important marks that you need to get started with your painting. Once I've got a rough outline of the bird, I like to go back in and tighten up my drawing with more specific sketch marks. I add details like the eye and the beak, more specific shapes around the feathers and the wings. And I like to darken up some of my edges, including adding a few feather details and stronger marks for the toes and for the feet. I'm also making sure that the belly is a nice rounded shape, that it's not misshapen or misformed, and including the little branch underneath the feet of our kingfisher. Make sure to make it nice and bumpy because in nature you rarely see just a perfect straight branch. And then of course it's helpful to add some of those feather details on the wings. You really just need enough information to get started. If you're finding this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. This really helps me out as a creator to continue bringing you free content like this. So thanks. So I'm going to start with the wet and wet technique and a couple of these small patches of white feathers on the head of the bird. So with clean water painted in, I can drop in my first color, which is my permanent yellow light. And it looks a little bit stark right now, but don't worry, it's going to look much lighter as we add darker paint. A little bit of the ultramarine blue helps neutralize that and give it a nice grayish tint. And then with that watered ultramarine with a tiny bit of the yellow mixed in, I'm painting on a first layer everywhere I see blue inside of the kingfisher's feathers. That includes the top of the head and along the wing. I'm adding more water to my paint so that it's not really dark yet. This is serving as the first layer or the lightest value within that blue. This is also the color I'm using to paint across the top of the beak and inside of the highlight of the eye and anywhere that I just see a light blue tint. So there's our first layer. I'm gonna scrape that dry off my palette just so I can mix everything cleanly from here on out. And with my yellow, I'm just adding a little bit of water. And this is gonna be the base layer or the first color that I use for the belly. Now, of course, the kingfisher's belly is not yellow, but we're gonna do something called glazing, which is where you build up layers of color to achieve the color mix you're looking for. So with all the yellow painted in, I'm going to let that belly dry and while that's drying I can paint things like the branch. So I'm starting with the yellow details in the branch just using a scrubbing motion of my brush. And then to create a green mixture I mix in a little of the ultramarine blue with that permanent yellow light. You can adjust your mixture however you want. It really just depends on the ratio of blue versus yellow to get the combination that you're looking for. Just mix until you're happy with it and then with that green I'm painting on the moss on the branch. Mixing in a little of my Scarlet Lake Red now, this is the first time we've used this color, but when you mix it all together with that blue and yellow that's on the palette, you actually get a nice neutral gray. When you combine all three of your primary colors, they all sort of cancel each other out and you get a neutralized tone. This is how you can mix earth tones like grays, blacks, and browns. If you feel like maybe this video is moving just a little bit too fast, good news, it's available in real time. This Kingfisher tutorial is actually part of an entire series I've created using only the primary colors. When you become a member of my Watercolor Mastery membership, you'll be able to access this complete course on primary colors, which includes detailed instruction on how to choose your colors, how to tell if they're warm or cool colors, how to combine them to get the purest mixes and avoid muddy colors, and six fun painting projects using only those primary colors. As a member, you'll also have access to my entire library of fully narrated real-time tutorials, which all come with a downloadable reference photo and traceable line drawing, and a complete list of supplies used in each video. There are currently over 90 courses, and I'm adding more every single month. You can cancel at any time. 
I'll leave a link in the description below so you can check that out. All right, let's get back to the video. Using that gray combination with a little bit more blue in this combination here, I'm painting in between the feet and you can see there's a little extra red as I approach the bottom edge of the branch here and the little rounded turn of the branch at the base, some of the shadow shapes at the bottom, all of these look brown because I've mixed a little more red into my mixture of the three primaries. Now, if you really want to make it stand out and pop, introduce brilliant hues of your primary without any mixes in it. So I'm adding some pops of that yellow to really make that branch colorful. Now, I'm gonna add another layer of Scarlet Lake to the belly. Since it's completely dry, you can do this without disturbing the layer beneath. I add a little bit of water in if I want it to be lighter towards the top. Remember that with watercolor, you must adjust your values by simply adding water. You can also do a direct mix by mixing the yellow and the red on your palette to create an orange. You can see because those two colors are very close on the color wheel, we get a beautiful, brilliant, perfect orange. I'm using that orange color to paint wet and wet on that red belly. Without rinsing my brush, I dip it in that gray combo that's already on my palette and this produces a dark, rich brown. With this color, I'm painting the shadow shape right underneath the tail and creating a shadow beneath the wing. With a little blue mixed in, I can also build up a nice black for the bottom edges of those feathers and to really enrich the detail and pump up the value of the shadow shapes underneath the bird. I'm adding a few more little tiny brush strokes suggesting feathers in the belly. And then combining my yellow and my red once again, I'm using that orange combo for the patches of orange inside of the head and above the beak. The feet are also almost brilliant red, so I'm just taking Scarlet Lake directly out of my palette and painting those on the feet, just leaving a couple little highlights along the top where we see the sunlight catching in those areas. Now, it's time to darken those feathers, so I'm mixing up a pure ultramarine blue with just enough water to make it smooth and paintable. And using my silver black velvet size two round brush, I'm painting those little curved feather details along the top of the head. To make these look realistic, it's important to leave spaces in between your marks so that we have the effect of dark feathers and light feathers all mixed together. Where you want to cover broader sections, you can use the belly side of the brush and sort of flatten it along the paper and adding a little bit more water like this really helps you paint broader sections quicker. Be sure to leave little spaces of the white of the paper showing through, or in this case, the light blue, indicating those little white spots within the wings. Now it's time to mix black. Black is actually really easy to mix. You just need tons of rich, juicy paint, mostly with your blue and your red combination. You can add a little bit of the yellow in, but really the red and the blue are gonna be a perfect combo for your black. With your black, you can start painting the details like the dark shapes on the head and on the wings. We're also going to use that to paint the eye and stick with a small brush for these details and be sure to leave little highlights in the eye so that it looks bright eyed and realistic. On the beak, we wanna make sure we also leave a really nice highlight so that we can see where the top part of the beak separates from the bottom. I'm adding a little bit more water in my black mixture and a tiny bit of yellow and red to make it more of a neutral gray and less blue. And with this watered down gray, I'm using that to darken the top of the beak with another quick, broad brush stroke. With a nice neutral gray, we can also use this to darken larger areas such as the shadows on the head, the highlight on the eye, and any areas where you just want to darken with a more neutral tone. You can also use your black to paint little specific feathers on the wing. The last thing we need to darken on the bird is right underneath the beak with a little bit of this gray mixture that's already on our palette. Now it's up to you if you want to add a background. I'm going to mix up a green now, a nice earthy green using my warm yellow and my warm blue. Now when you combine a yellow and a blue that are fairly far apart on the color wheel, you're gonna end up with more of an earthy tone and that's exactly what I want in this case. So with my permanent yellow light and my ultramarine combined and lots of water mixed in, I'm using a half inch flat brush to loosely and quickly paint a really fun and whimsical background on my Kingfisher painting. I'm also using this brush to kind of reactivate some of the paint along the edges of the branch and along the wing and along the belly and this helps us lose some of those edges or help them to blend into the background a little bit so that the bird and the branch feel more fused with its environment. It's always fun for me to just sort of play with edges at the very end and see how fun and whimsical I can make the painting look. So there's our finished Kingfisher painting. 
If you guys enjoyed this video and you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button right now and hit the bell so you never miss any new videos. Check out these other videos about painting birds and watercolor and I'll see you there.